Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. I am an artist and I am freakishly excited about some big news today. Like super, super crazy excited. Part of it is that I have a new class out and I'm always excited when I have a new class out because it means that something that I birthed has now been transferred to you and you can go and birth new artwork from there and you can take those skills and adapt them and grow. And I love seeing that flowering in the world. That brings me joy. So I have a lot of joy today, but I have even more joy because this class release comes not just with a class release, but I have some other really big news along with it. I have a partner, a partner in this craziness. A partner in this joy. And that partner is Olo Markers. They are offering for you, just because of me, a discount on their markers. You can get 15% off of Olo Markers until the end of August 2024 if you use my coupon code. That's part of it. The other part is that they are offering a ginormous prize. Ginormous, yes. I'm gonna tell you about that at the end of the video because I gotta give you something to stick around for. <laughs> Thirdly though, is that third? are we on three or four now? I don't even know. I'm just so full of joy, I can't even count anymore. I now have me, little old me, little old nobody, has her own set of curated markers at Olo. Yep, they have my name on them. Now they're not new colors. It's a collection of their colors that I recommend. And they're colors that are all like rainbowy. Yes, rainbowy and beautiful. And you love rainbows. I know that. So I picked these just for you. But I also picked them because I want to show you how to use them together to make neutrals. Because you notice there's no neutrals here. There's no browns here. There's no grays. But we're going to make amazing art with these colors. And I have two classes that use just these colors. If that's all you need ever wanted to start out with alcohol markers this is a great time to do it but I'm going to tell you all about the giveaways and the markers and everything all the stuff at the end for right now what I really want to do is show you how to make a hexagonal sketchbook because I promised that in my last video let's go do that So to make a hexagonal sketchbook, do not do what I did to begin with, because I made one that was way too hard for me. It's beyond my skills, but I'm going to show you a much simpler one. But the one that I made is this guy, and it's, yeah, just a little bit on the crazy side. It's not particularly even. I did learn how to make a stitched binding, and that was kind of cool. Uh, sea Lemon is a channel where she does a lot of beautiful book binding. Mine is not so beautiful because my trimming on my hexagons was not great, but I learned how to make signatures and all that, and I'm going to use the sketchbook anyway. However, this is not going to work for the purposes that I was going to use it for, which is for this class. And uh, here is me doing the first step, which is taking the sheets of paper that I'm going to be using, and you can use whatever paper you want. I'm using Nina here which is my favorite paper to use with alcohol markers. And then however many pages you want, you'll get two pages out of each one. So just fold them in half and do a nice score along one side. Then there's a hexagon shape that I'll put in a PDF that you can download and you can trace it. So I cut it out first, you know, using my, my knife and then traced it onto the right hand side of one of the panels line them all up so that the folds are all nice and even and held tightly and then start cutting out those hexagons. I had an idea part way through this so you'll want to start with step two rather than step one. The step one here is just removing one of those sections and I'm cutting through several pieces of paper. You're going to want to go slowly. Use an extremely sharp knife. Do not hurt yourself because you bleed. Uh, I have an injury on one thumb from years ago in college when I sliced my thumb while I was getting ready for my senior show. And I, my thumb throbs every single time I have a knife out. So just be very careful. Uh, but 
you'll cut off through all the pieces little by little. Now my recommendation is to make the hexagon on one part of the page and then cut off the other part and you can make a little sketchbook out of that. And I'll show you what I'm using my little extras for at a little bit later in this video. But again, just cutting very slowly, working on basically cutting through one sheet at a time, not trying to cut through the entire group because you'll end up just pressing really hard and you'll also end up cutting your thumb and nobody wants to do that. So again, be careful. But just, you know, slicing off all of those around the hexagon. A hexagon is a super simple shape. You can make it any size you want. You can, you know, make a hexagon in your computer. If you have a die, you can make a hexagon, whatever size. You can make a little itty bitty teeny sketchbook this way. So each one of these then will give you two pieces. So you'll have two pieces with a fold in the middle and all you do is glue them together. Literally just put some glue in there. Now you can use different kinds of adhesive, but I would recommend something really sturdy to do that with. And if you're going to be, you know, tracing something onto one of these panels, you'll want to do that before you adhere the sketchbook together. Because each one of these panels, since they're doubled up, they're gonna have two layers of paper, so you won't really be able to see through to trace. But if you're gonna stamp something on it or draw something on it yourself, like I would be doing, you don't really need to worry about that but you can always adhere it all together later on. Now I'm using score tape for mine and I have some score sheets as well. You can use that kind of adhesive I recommend because it's super sticky and it's not gonna ever come loose. Your book will stick around for a really long time. Whereas if you use a tape runner, it may fall apart on you. You know, if it gets warm, that sort of thing. Um, if you use this score tape, just be really careful and don't lay it down till you're really sure that the page is going to fold correctly because this stuff is so sticky <laughs> it's not going to forgive you if you get it a little bit wrong but you know it's still worth using because it's so super sticky and then always test to make sure everything folds correctly put on the next panel and you can make one that's like 50 panels long if you want it, and once these are Kind of together you can fold it like a book it doesn't have to actually be an accordion laid out on the table really huge it can just be a, you know a book that happens to zigzag and that's it now you can do this in different shapes too you can do rectangles you can do a square sketchbook lots of different kinds of things but when you get it done you'll notice that your papers probably did not all line up evenly the important part is to get the left and right where the scores are, get those nice and straight, because then your sides will be perfect or close to perfect. And then the tops and the bottoms that do not have a fold in them, you can do a little slice, just a tiny, tiny slice to get rid of any extra pieces because some of mine just didn't line up absolutely perfectly because I am a failed human being and you might be as well. But that's really easy to do, but just do it again with a very, very sharp knife and go little by little so that you can make your cuts very slowly over time and get them all looking perfect. If you have any leftover bits hanging onto your sketchbook, you can always just use a nail file and then you've got a sketchbook that's all ready to go. Now each panel is doubled up, which means you can draw on the front and back with alcohol markers. The front panel though, and the back panel are only one thickness. So you can just take a simple hexagon and glue it on there. And then you could do both sides of the entire book, which is kind of cool. So what did I do with the rest of it? I glued it together and I made a little sketchbook out of it. And that was done with the same process, just lining them up and trimming them all down at the end and gluing them in between. So I made mine into a swatch book. Now I do not recommend going crazy swatching your alcohol markers. Alcohol marker inks are not inexpensive. So don't spend a whole lot of effort on doing this. Do some artwork. But this is all the colors that I started finding that I had in this little set of curated markers that I put together, which is kind of amazing to see what you can get when you combine one color with another. This was based on my alcohol marker jumpstart class. There's a glazing lesson and it's much more intricate than what I'm going to show you here for this quick swatch chart. So all I did was put down four blobs. The two blobs on the end are paired with colors that are on the left or right of it, analogous colors on the color wheel. 
just to see what they're like with neighbors. And then the two middle ones, one is one layer of color and the other is two layers of color. And then mark down what they all are. It's important to stick with the same value when you're doing this. Like when I was using light colors, I had to look for light colors on either side of it on the color wheel. Just because a mid-tone color on top of a really light color will just eat it up. It'll just disappear. But then sometimes I went astray. Like I used a warm red on top of a violet color and I got a really beautiful salmon. So there's all different kinds of things you can do as well, like test your complementary colors. And since I did four blobs and I didn't do five, I just did half of one of my blobs with the extra color and used a complementary one. Again, with about the same value as the main color so that I kind of kept those apples to apples. And it gives me a really good idea what I can mix with if I want to start making colors that are darker or colors that are more desaturated or something like that. So I have my very own swatch book for my own set of markers. That was kind of exciting to make and I was trying to think about whether I should put my name on this little book, but I didn't. So there you go. That is my set of colors, but you can do this with any medium, by the way. You can swatch till the cows come home, but my recommendation is to actually do artwork because artwork will teach you more than swatch blobs. So I will repeat that for the good of the order because I've said that a lot. Now, if you would like to additionally learn to draw and color, the brand new Chroma coloring class is available and Chroma means color. So we're gonna focus a lot on color. And this is of course in alcohol marker, so We're gonna get lots of bright color. We're gonna talk about layering color and how to think through that and how to work with both analogous colors and complementary colors and how to darken colors when you don't have something like a black or a dark gray. Like in this set, there is no dark color. And yet a lot of these drawings come out with plenty of contrast. So we'll talk about how to create that with the colors that you have. The drawings in this course are pretty simple. They're pretty forgiving and the coloring is complex, but I'm not putting it at a level four class because there is not a lot of difficult drawing. There are sketches for them, just the basic outline sketches, and they're not ones that you're going to want to print out and color in. That's not the kind of sketches they are, but they're the kind to trace. So if you make the sketchbook, you'll want to trace them onto your hexagons while your paper is not adhered to another sheet because when it's doubled up you can, can't see through it when you put it up against a window but you can do that real easily with one sheet of cardstock. So there's like all different kinds of fun things in each one of the lessons. Uh, it even included food because you know me like there's always food that is part of my life and I had to do ice cream. So I did a really beautiful custard. It was like way fun and made me want to go get a, a little ice cream. Like it really did. Maybe that's just a symptom of me feeling like I need a break. So <laughs> sometimes you just get a little bit of what's inside my head instead of just what's inside my art when you take a class from me. But uh, these were really fun drawings for me to make. I hope they're gonna be fun for you. This one, I even gave the the owl, I like named parts of him that were not really names for him, like the, the area around the neck of him. I just kept calling it his scarf. So hopefully now everybody else will start to refer to uh, owls having scarves. Yeah, maybe I've started something here. But you can see that color layering can turn colors that don't look like they're neutrals into a neutral. Like, look how beautifully brown those colors are and how realistic that looks. But it was done with this set of rainbow colors. Color theory is just an amazing, amazing thing. And the more people I can turn on to color theory, the more joy I have. Because I just know there's more people who can just look at things and be absolutely flabbergasted the way I am. I get so excited when I layer a color over something and it turns into an unexpected hue and I'm like I never thought it would do that but look at that and then I can figure out why it did that. Now this drawing is the hardest one out of them all and I included it because I kept changing my mind about different features in it because I was struggling like this was not a simple one like I thought it was going to be 
and these crazy ribbon-like tentacles got a little wacko and I am not expecting too many people to try it but I did include six lessons in this one instead of five my normal standard is either a five lesson class or a ten lesson class so this one is going to have an extra bonus which is the cover the leaves and these nice big beautiful drops because in the first lesson we talk about droplets in a very small format this one is really looking at them much closer and you'll be able to either have the words chroma coloring on your piece or you can do it without it'll be an option for the student and you can make a sketchbook that's like 85 pages long if you want and just keep making drawings if you like or you can just do the six or the five that are in the class that you want to do entirely up to you so that is the chroma coloring class yowza very excited to see what you do with it well, you stuck around just so you could hear about the prizes, right? Well, let's get this party started, shall we? I am going to be giving away four seats in my classes, and they're going to be choice between two classes. You can pick whichever one it is that you want if you are the winner. If you have already purchased that course during this next couple of weeks and you win, then I will simply refund you so you don't have to wait and find out if you won to decide if you're ready for that class. So you can go ahead and sign up right away without the chance of missing out on a big win. The second prize is going to be from Olo. Now I did tell you that they have a 15% off coupon code just for us, just between us. Shh, don't tell anybody, tell everybody that you can purchase markers for 15% off, but they're also going to offer a grand prize. Yes, a grand prize. And that is going to be a gift certificate, the equivalent of 32 markers. 32 of these half markers. Now a half marker might sound like, well, that's kind of wussy. No, a half marker from Olo has the same amount of ink as Copic markers. That's a lot of ink. So you get a lot of color out of this prize and I, coordinated with them to do it as a gift certificate instead of just straight up markers in case you need like sketchbooks or something if you already have the markers. So it's going to be a get what you want if you win. Now on my blog is where the giveaway for my classes will be and the instructions for how to enter are there. Read them, follow the directions. And the Olo marker giveaway is going to be on my Instagram. Both of these are gonna run through the end of August and then in early September, I'll announce the winners and it'll be exciting, it'll be another party and hopefully you will get the notice that you won if you are one of the winners. Now, if you should decide you're going to buy the Sandy Allnock set of markers from Olo, then let me know because I have a couple little things I would like to send you. One is a little chart that I made for my marker set. You can color that in, it would be really cute. I will also send you my swatch list so you can swatch the same things that I did and see how many colors that you can get from that, okay? I would like to send that to you. Email me if you get the set, it'll be awesome. And I wanna see what you make with it too. Tag me. All right, I'm gonna go because I got more exciting things to go work on. I got another new class coming up. You're gonna love it. I'll see you later. Bye.